In this section, we're going to be looking at measurement uncertainty, accuracy, and precision. By the end of this video, you should be able to de define accuracy and precision and differentiate between systematic and random errors. Accuracy is how close a measured value is to the actual value. Accuracy is measured, how accurate you are, is measured by the percent error. So if you're really close to the actual value, what you should have gotten when you took a measurement, then your measurement is accurate. Precision is how close a set of measured values are to each other. And that is measured not by percent error, but by standard deviation. So in order to talk about the precision of a measurement, you have to have multiple measurements taken of the same thing. In order to talk about the accuracy, you have to know what the actual value is. The formula for percent error we have used in the past. Standard deviation, you learned how to do on your graphing calculator with the program in your Algebra 2 trigonometry class. However, in this class, we're going to be doing it out by hand. And the equation for standard deviation is the square root of the summation of what you're going to do is take each individual term and subtract it from the average of all of your values and square it and then add up all of those. Divide that by one less than the number of values you have and take the square root. So it's not necessarily a complicated, but a very tedious procedure because you've got to find the average and then subtract and square for all of the values and then add up and things like that. Um, so we will be doing some examples of how to do this in class and you won't have a hundred terms that you're trying to find the precision of, but you should be able to, to follow that procedure for this equation. So if we're looking at this target and assume that bullseye is the correct value. If we look at this first picture, the X's, the measurements are almost dead on in the center, which tells us that they are accurate because they are centered. These values are also precise because they are close together. The second one the values are still precise because they're very close together, but they're not accurate because they're not in the center of the target. The third one, the values are not precise because they're not close together. However, they're relatively accurate, especially if you were to average all of these data. The average is definitely a um, an accurate value. The last one, the values are not accurate, they're not toward the, in the center, and they're not precise, they're not closely clustered together either. So when we're looking at accuracy and precision, there are different things that can affect whether your values are accurate or precise. And those are going to deal with the two different types of errors. And we've already talked about how every measurement we take has some amount of uncertainty to it. But when we're looking at errors, the two types are systematic errors or random errors. Systematic errors are when you systematically do something wrong. So for example, if you are reading an instrument and you read from the top of the meniscus instead of the bottom of the meniscus, that's a systematic error. And that will always give you a reading that's a little bit too high in that case. Um, so that would allow our values to still be precise, but they would not be accurate because they're all above that accepted value. A random error is one that's going to be a little harder to deal with. It's not that there's a problem with what you're doing, but that there are other factors that might not be taken into to consideration 
that are sometimes going to make those values a little bit high and sometimes going to make those values a little bit low. So for example, if you're doing a lab in a room, the temperature is not going to be exactly constant throughout the entire experiment. The humidity and the atmospheric pressure might be changing a little bit during that time. So all of those things are going to influence the values that you record, but it's not because you did something wrong. It's not something that's always going to make the value too high or too low. So if we look at what each of these types of errors will do to our data, a systematic error lets those values still be clustered very close together, but they're all going to have the same effect on that data that you're reading. They're all gonna make it too high or all make it too low. A random error is sometimes going to make the value a little bit higher or a little bit lower. It's going to fluctuate in which type of change it makes. That's one of the reasons why having multiple um, measurements and looking at the average of them is beneficial. That helps account for some of the random error that are in our measurements. So when we're doing labs, we have to look at both the accuracy and the precision of our data. And systematic errors, we should always be looking for problems with what it is we're doing and correcting for that so that we get more accurate values. We do need to recognize that random errors do exist, which is why we're never going to get absolutely perfect results every single time. Um, but again, the more, um, the more trials we do of something, the more accurate our average will be because the random error kind of cancels itself out a little bit when you take the average of multiple values.